Welcome to part two of On Eagle's Wings. I know I'm spending a lot of time on Egypt, but I'm laying the foundation. And by the time I finish the study and tie up all the loose ends, you'll understand why I spent so much time. Egypt is likened unto the world in the Bible. So let's take a look at some more background. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 9 and verse 11. This is after the flood. Noah and his family is getting ready to, you know, they're getting ready to depart from the ark, or they have departed from the ark. Chapter 9, verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, God speaking. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Oh, that's right. Next time it's going to be fire. Verse 12. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. What does perpetual mean? It means forever. I do set my bow in the cloud, that's a rainbow, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Isn't it funny how the sodomites and lesbians um, adopted the rainbow as their symbol? Hmm, is that mocking God or what? And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth from the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth overspread. And as one of my listeners that I was speaking to, um, well, had conversed, well, written William and everything, um, it's possible that these three sons had different mothers, or they could have had the same mother. And uh, I'm kind of wondering if Ham was uh, had married one of Cain's children. You know, why would you name your, your kid Canaan? You know, I know it's spelled different than Cain, but that's the English. You know, Cain and Canaan. You know, it sounds very much alike. So, I don't know. Did Ham marry one of Cain's children? I don't know. Could he have married one of his daughters? You know, did Shem and Japheth have different wives and uh, from the lineage than Ham? I don't know. Bible doesn't really say. So, verse 19. These are the three sons of Noah... And of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman and planted a vineyard. And, you know, a grape vineyard. What, what do you do with grapes? You make wine, right? And he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Now, was he just naked laying on the bed and, you know, he looked at him? You know, when you look up nakedness of your father in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, it has reference to uh, having sexual relations with your father's wife. 
maybe it's not your you know, it might be a stepmother. I don't I don't know if it was Ham's actual mother or just a stepmother. I don't know. But usually that's what that means. All right. In Leviticus 18, verse 7, The nakedness of thy father, or the nakedness of thy mother, shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Verse 8, The nakedness of thy father's wife, shalt thou not uncover, it is thy father's nakedness. So, you know, you could keep reading, and, uh, I mean, let's face it, I I've never known any people that uh, have sex with their clothes on. So what are they doing? They're uncovering themselves. I've actually had people argue with me that this doesn't mean sexual relations. You know, it, it just, the ignorance of some people just absolutely astounds me, or what war they're possessed of a devil i don't know all right back to genesis 9 and ham the father of canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without did uh, ham have sexual relations with noah's wife when he was drunk and naked uh, you know i don't know verse 23 and Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Um, some people even believe that Ham sodomized his father. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I, the Bible just doesn't give you a definitive answer, but... Ham did something terrible. So, verse 24. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the God of the Lord God of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So God was to be blessed for Shem, and yet Canaan was cursed to be a servant. You know, I found it interesting. Why would Noah curse Ham's son if it was Ham that did something bad to him? The only thing I could figure out is he, uh, Ham must have married into the wrong family line. And uh, they would be cursed forever because of it. You know, a lot of people don't believe that, but uh, if you look at my playlist on the angels that sinned, Genesis 6, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty plain to those that read the uh, Old Testament. I mean, it, let's face it, people. God told Israel when they came out of Egypt to go into the land of Canaan. Canaan, yep, same Canaan, same people. And he told them to exterminate all of them. You know, and, and then you read... The, you go to churches now, and they say, oh, read John 3.16, now God's going to save them. Um, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, Esau intermarried with uh, some Hittite women that were part of the Canaanite tribes. And Malachi 1 tells you how God felt about Esau. He hated him. He threw away his lineage. Well, let's face it, it's a satanic seed line. So, let's take a look at uh, the land of Ham. All right. 
Psalms 106 and verse 22. Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. Well, what happened in the Red Sea? Didn't in the last study we read about how God drowned Pharaoh's army? Oh, yeah. He totally drowned his army at the Red Sea. All right, let's take a look at um, Psalms chapter 105. I guess we'll read pretty much the whole thing. Starting in verse 1. O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. If you want to know who the chosen people are, read Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs of according to the promise. All right, back to Psalms 105, verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirm the same unto Jacob for law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Now remember, Jacob had his name changed by the Lord himself to Israel. Jacob is Israel, period. I mean, you know, if you go to court and you say, oh, I don't like my last name. Uh, if your last name was Dumkuff, which means, you know, stupid idiot in German, you know, you might want to change your name to Smith or Jones or whatever, you know, so you go and get a name change. Court lets you change your name. Well, God changed Jacob's name to Israel, which means basically rules with God. And confirm the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. Did you know the, the word Israel appears in the Bible over 2,000 times? You know, I would say that's important. All right, uh, let's see. Genesis 32, verse 28. And he said, who said? God. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and prevailed. So I'm not just making this stuff up. So Psalms 105.10 And confirm the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel with an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. Hmm. So the children of Canaan went to the land. Evidently, they knew, or perhaps Satan told them, that this land was going to belong to Israel. So the Canaan, his, his descendants, his children, went there and took it first. saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. 
When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land, he brake the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Remember the, I did a whole study on Joseph called uh, Forgiveness. It's on a playlist. You want to read a, you you want to read about forgiveness? Don't read the shack. Read the book of Exodus. Read the story of Joseph. That's a story of forgiveness. You don't want to read the shack. The shack is garbage. I mean, the guy's not even a Christian. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure, and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Ooh. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Egypt is the land of Ham, people. This is called parallelism. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hmm. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Where did they show the signs and wonders? Egypt and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came divers sorts of flies, and lice in all their coasts. He gave them hail for rain, and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also, and their fig trees, and brake the trees of their coasts. He spake, and the locusts came, and caterpillars, and that without number, and did eat up all the herbs in their land, and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote all, their, all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed. <laughs> How's that? Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covenant and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock. I did a whole study on the rock. He opened the rock and the waters gushed out and they ran in dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness and gave them the lands of the heathen. What lands of the heathen? The Canaan, Canaanites. And he gave them the lands of the heathen and they inherited the labor of the people. You see, the Canaanites went to the land and they built cities, they planted trees, they cultivated vineyards and, and farms. And Israel came in and killed a lot of them and took over the cities. And they're like, oh, cool, man, we got a new house here. And if you don't understand that they were of the satanic seed line, you think God is a homicidal maniac. I mean, after all, why would he have the Hebrews go in and kill the, the Canaanites? Well, they were hybrids. Read Genesis 6. 
the Angels at Sin playlist that I have. The churches hide this information from you. And they pass that collection plate around. Me, I, I, I don't pass the collection plate around, do I? You don't hear me every five minutes saying, Bless ye the Lord. Uh, uh, send, send your donation to the Lord. Uh, here's my address. No. And he gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. So it's pretty obvious Egypt was the land of Ham. Okay? All right. Um, let's see. God doesn't have a lot of good things to say about Egypt. He really doesn't. Uh, I guess we're going to read Revelation 11. Revelation verse uh, 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot, Forty and two months. Okay. All right, let's take a look at Revelation. Let's see, what is it? 11, verse 1. Let's see what the Bible says about um, Egypt. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and then that worship therein. So evidently, uh, there is going to be another temple built. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And that word is in the Greek is uh, ethnos. It's where we get the English word ethnic, as an ethnic group, as in Caucasians. Um, Negroes, you know, ethnic, ethnos, na nations, and Gentiles. It's, it's the same word. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Well, what's the holy city? Jerusalem. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy, prophecy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. Uh, two thousand two hundred and three score days is basically the same as forty-two. Uh, forty-two months. It's approximately three and a half years. And I did a thing on the two witnesses. Uh, one of them is going to be Elijah. And the other candidate, people say, is either Moses, because of the transfiguration, Elijah and Moses, at the Christ, uh, the, the transfiguration of Christ. Or um, some people say Enoch, because Enoch was taken up. I'm kind of leaning towards Enoch, but hey, I'm, not, I'm, no, I'm no expert on the Bible, believe me. But uh, Enoch and Elijah were the only two people in the Bible who never died. Moses died, but yet he was at the transfiguration. You know, and it's funny, when Christ was at the transfiguration, there was Moses and Enoch, or Elijah there. Well, Moses was the law, and Elijah was the prophets. You know, they symbolized the, the law and the prophets. And Jesus said, you know, the Ten Commandments could be boiled down to the Two Commandments. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. He said, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. So, all right. So, uh, the two witnesses have not come yet. So, 
And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy, prophesy, prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Well, if you, I did an hour and 45 minute study on Elijah. And uh, a, King Ahab, he had a wife named Jezebel, tried to um, kill Elijah, and they sent like 50 soldiers after him. And uh, they were trying to arrest him, and Elijah says, Well, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and devour you and your 50 soldiers. Well, fire came down from heaven and burned up the captain and his 50 soldiers. I mean, you know, one prophet and 50 soldiers? <laughs> uh, yeah. For those of you that are in the military, that's like three squads. You know? So that's like two or three squads and, and one to two platoons. That's a, you know, 50 men. That's that's a pretty good sized force to arrest, you know, one guy, right? So, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Yeah, they speak the word and fire comes down from the sky and burns up their enemies. You know, their, their mouths are not flamethrowers, okay? Uh, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Well, that's what Elijah did. It didn't rain for three and a half years in Israel. Guess what? There was a famine in the land. That's what happens when you don't have any rain. These have power to shut heaven. And Elijah, this is exactly what Elijah did. This is why if you don't read the Old Testament, uh, you know, you read this stuff in the New Testament and you're like, it shouldn't be new. I mean, let's face it, Revelation's the last chapter. Well, you know, if you haven't read the first half of the book or first three quarters of the book, when you get to the end, a lot of it's not going to make sense. And if you don't have time to read the Bible, I suggest you take your TV and throw it in the garbage. How's that? Then you'll find time. Matter of fact, uh, there's a guy named Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y. He does the uh, New Testament, well, he does the Bible. He narrates the Bible uh, on audio. You can get the New Testament for like, with shipping, like $25 on CD and just stick it in your car on your way to work every day. You'd be surprised what you'd learn. I think the whole Bible is like $75 or $85, something like that. Maybe it's a hundred. I don't know. Isn't the word of God worth a hundred bucks? I think so. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood. Isn't that what Moses did? Oh yeah. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies. So, these guys are going to be testifying for the word of God. And the beast is going to come out of the bottomless pit, fight against them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually, spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So where are they going to be? Jerusalem. And when people tell you, oh, that's Rome, well, okay, so your, God, your Lord is not Jesus Christ, because your Lord was crucified in, in Rome. Okay, in Rome, your Lord is not Jesus Christ. If you say the great city is Rome, then your Lord is not Jesus Christ because 
Jesus Christ was not crucified in Rome. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where, 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 not by, not who, but where, also our Lord was crucified. And they, uh, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer or allow and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And then you can read it and it sounds like, you know, they're going to give gifts to each other. And, you know, you can read all this on your own. It sounds like Christmas to me, you know, giving gifts to each other and rejoicing. Oh, man, we got rid of those two guys. Oh, you know, praise Satan. You know, that's that's probably what they'll be Satan. Well, praise the beast or whatever. I bet you I bet you the beast name's gonna be Yeshua. You watch. You watch. All right, so did did Rome kill um Jesus? Let's let's take a look. All right, so did was did Rome kill Jesus? Let's let's take a look and nail uh put the nail in the coffin of this one. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and starting in verse 13. 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God which you effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches, churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus, and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Should we read that again? For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus, and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men. Jews do not please God. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. There's that nail in the coffin. All right, so. Egypt, Jerusalem is likened to Sodom and Egypt. In the latter days. Did you know that um, Tel Aviv and is considered the, well, it's the capital of the Israeli state. They're the gay capital of the Middle East. And did you know that Tel Aviv and Jerusalem have been having numerous gay pride parades? You don't see that in any of the Muslim countries, do you? No. You know, in a lot of ways, I got a lot more respect for the Muslims than I do the uh, Talmudists and the Kabbalists, the Kabbalah followers. I have a lot more respect for the Muslims. At least they consider Jesus a sinless prophet, a true prophet. So, But that's just my opinion. I, I still uh, think we shouldn't live with them, but that's just my opinion. Um. If Angela Merkel, the dictator of Germany, wants to bring Muslims and give them asylum, I say send them to Jerusalem, send them to Tel Aviv. That's what I say. 
All right, so the Bible doesn't have much good things to say about Egypt. It's the land of Ham. So, are we going to get started on Eagle? Yeah, let's get started on Eagle. I think I've made my points and done the foundation. All right, let's take a look at Eagle. All right, let's go to the book of Exodus. You know, Genesis and Exodus, I mean, these are important books, people. They really are. And, you know, churches don't teach this stuff for the most part, you know? Even in Bible cemetery, I, I mean, cemetery? Yeah, um, yeah, Bible seminary, you know, Bible college, cemetery, yeah. You know, dead dead men's bones. They don't cover this this kind of stuff. I mean, I had to learn this on my own. Um, my Bible college, what do they teach? The pre-trib rapture, uh, dispensational theology, which is a heresy. Has It's another gospel. That's the kind of stuff they teach you. Um, they don't teach you this kind of stuff. Exodus chapter 19. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth, out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. You see, the thing is, God wanted to take Israel out of Egypt, and he took them into the wilderness in the desert. Because he not only wanted to get Israel out of Egypt, he wanted to get Egypt out of Israel. You know, remember it said, and the two witnesses, you know, will lie in the you know the great city, that great city, um, which is you know Sodom and Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You know, Sodom was you know bunch of sodomites god destroyed it with um you know he rained fire and brimstone upon it and god rained hail with fire upon egypt so you know he wanted to get the people in the wilderness to to get all the junk they learned in egypt to, to get them to throw it away and get rid of it and moses went up unto god and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the mount, uh, the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. See, that's parallelism, people. Listen carefully. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Oh yeah, you saw what I did to the Egyptians. I smote them with all the plagues, the lice, I turned the water to blood, the darkness, the hail with fire and brimstone. I even killed all their firstborn, and I drowned their army in the Red Sea. Oh yeah, you saw what I did. But you people didn't suffer, but the Egyptians did. The land of Ham, okay? Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Remember this, people. The Lord says, and how I bear you, not B-E-A-R, not a, a not, you know, not an animal, but, uh, you know, a bear that, you know, what was it, uh, Pooh Bear? I don't know. Winnie the Pooh? You know, not that kind of a bear. Uh, you know, a horse will bear a rider, on his back, on the saddle, that kind of a bear. And how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. See, this is called a figure of speech. You know, God didn't take a, 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 a huge eagle and put 600,000 men of Israel on the back of an eagle and then fly away. No, it's a figure of speech. Ye have seen what I have done unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Remember that. This comes back up in Revelation. This very same language. 
Eagle's Wings. comes right in Revelation. When I get to that, we're going to close out, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. This is why I've spent so much time in the Exodus in Egypt. It has This kind of stuff has a lot to do with Revelation. It really does. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. Liars! You liars! And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Three days, right? On the third day? Well, when Christ was crucified, didn't he raise it again from the third on the third day? Oh yeah, he did. You know? That's an interesting study. Where was where was Jesus when he was crucified, his body? Where was he for those three days? That's an interesting study. Matter of fact, I did it. I don't remember the name of it. You gotta realize I'm I'm approaching 800 studies now. It's, I guess I'm getting Alzheimer's. I can't remember everything. All right, so. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. Oh yeah, you, Moses is going to go up in the mount, but you didn't want to be anywhere near that thing. You didn't want to touch it because God will kill you. There shall not in hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. See, God wanted them to, to be clean on the outside. And he's given them the law, and he wants them to be clean on the inside, too. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. Don't be, um, don't be playing with your wife. I want you to be holy and sanctified. You know, there's there's a time to have fun with, you know, your spouse, and then there's a time to concentrate on what the Lord wants you to have, not our physical pleasure. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. You know, in Revelation, there's going to be a, a, a thick cloud at noontime, darkness, and it's going to be daytime, and yet people aren't going to be able to see. It's going to be pitch black. And a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. Isn't there seven trumpets in Revelation? Uh, Revelation? Oh, yeah. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that in the camp trembled. And bro Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. 
and Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mountain, sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. And Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. So here it is, the Lord's giving, you know, this is when the Lord gave them the law. Okay? Okay, next chapter, Exodus 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow them down themself, thyself to them, nor serve them. You know, people, I think it's a bad idea to make any kind of images and bow down to them. You know, the, um, the Vatican is famous for that, and even... The uh, Ortho Eastern Orthodox Church has been guilty of that on occasions. Of course, they call, don't call them images. They call them icons. <sighs> but what can I tell you? Thou shalt not bow thy, down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You see, if the father was a Satanist and did witchcraft and stuff and sacrificed children to Satan, God will visit the sin of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, if one of those people gets saved, obviously the, the curse isn't going to happen. But, you know, let's face it. If your father is a Satanist, there's a good chance you won't get any um, exposure to the Bible. What can I tell you? Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Do you know that Jesus said, oh, let's take a look. In John chapter 14 and verse 15, Jesus speaking, if ye love me, keep my commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments. I mean, that's Jesus. You know, if you don't like it, argue with him. Don't argue with me. I'm just a reporter. I'm just the guy reporting this stuff. You know? Matthew 22, 35. I know I've, I've, I've hammered on this a lot, but it's, it's important. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, who? Asked who? Christ. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying. Now, this is not a lawyer like we have in today. This was a, a lawyer who was a, a doctor of the law, of the Bible law. 
he was a he was a Bible scholar. I mean, you know, to be a lawyer back in those days, you you had to know Bible law. This guy knew the Bible quite well, believe me. But he's trying to trick up trick Jesus. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Love the Lord. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Huh. And let's face it. Jesus is just basically uh, verifying Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. In Deuteronomy 11 and 13, we read, And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy feeds, fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them, and boy, that's that's what's happening. That's what happened to America. And I've seen it, people. I saw what America was like in the 50s. I mean, not I was a, pretty much a baby in the 50s. But, you know, you want to see what America was like in the 50s? Watch reruns of Leave it to Beaver and Andy Griffin, Mayberry RFD. Take a look at it. That was America in the 50s. And then go look today. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath, his anger, and then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you and he shut up the heaven and there be no rain. Do you know there's huge parts of the United States that are in drought? Oh yeah. And he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these words, uh, lay, uh, lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes." And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou wakest up by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if ye shall walk... Uh, for if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river and the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea, shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye may tread upon, as he hath said unto you. 
Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. I think we, you know, I could keep reading, but I think you get the idea. All right, let's go back to Exodus chapter 20. Did Jesus say, um, believe on me and, and live like the devil and thou shalt be blessed? No. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. Right? And if you love the Lord, you're not going to, you know, worship the devil. And if you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from him or try to kill him to steal his property. Huh, so, all right, let's, um, let's see, let's go back. Exodus chapter 20. Verse 6. Well, or verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day of the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherein the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now that was an important thing. Because the Bible says that if uh, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. If you had three witnesses that said, well, I saw you know, Joe killed Sam, they put Joe to death for murder. And you weren't on death row for 25 years. No. No. That that never happened. That's because we got a kosher judicial system. Judicial system. Yeah. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. I wonder if that's for the sodomites, not to covet his... never mind. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. When the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear... But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Oh yeah, I'd be afraid too, people. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you. God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. Now what's the first thing they did under Aaron? They made the golden calf, 
and said, Behold Israel, your gods. Behold Israel, your god. Idiots. And, and you know, Solomon said, well, let's take a look. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 of verse 9, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. You know, let's face it, people, there's, there's nothing new. You know, the things they did in the past, they, they're going to do in the future. You know, basically, when you think about it, Mystery of Babylon is just, it, it's the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel, Babel, you know, the rebuilding of Babylon spiritually. There's no new thing, you know. But, you know, that's the thing. The things that the Lord showed us in the Old Testament in the past is a shadow and a figure of what's to come in the future. That's why the language, that's why you have to stick with the King James Bible. The King James Bible, when it uses the same language in the New Testament, you look at the language in the Old Testament and read the story and it'll tell you, it gives you an idea of what is coming you know, this, this on eagle's wings. God took Israel out of Egypt on eagle's wings. Well, guess what? In the New Testament, in Revelation, it talks about on eagle's wings too. It's talking about God taking his people, not out of Egypt, but out of Babylon, on eagle's wings. And that's what we're getting, we're going to be, you know, coming up on. So the new Bibles, they change the language. And the problem with that is you don't connect the New Testament with the Old Testament when you change the language. If it says on eagle's wings in one place and then it says on vultures' wings in the other place, and they change the new, the new Bible to vultures from eagle, Well, you don't make the connection. And they do that on purpose. And then these people think that they're great scholars because they use these modern Bibles. And they say, oh yes, it's so much easier to read. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let them keep reading their new Bibles. Let them keep with their false prophets and their false preachers, the wolves in sheep's clothing. And you better believe when the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast comes, they will deny their faith in Christ Jesus and worship the dragon. In Revelation chapter 13, Verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Isn't Jesus called the lion of the tribe of Judah? He's going to talk like a lion, like the lion of Judah. He's going to talk like the Messiah. Okay? And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his authority and his seat. I'm sorry. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death 
and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Listen carefully. And they worshipped the dragon. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Three and a half years, people. That's when the things get really, really bad. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you're going to worship the beast. If any man have a hear, ear, let him hear. So I think we ought to hold off for a little bit here. I think I'm, what I'm going to do is read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and then close this out and make this the end of part two and then try to finish up in part three. I'm going to try to finish it um, tomorrow. You know, a lot of time goes into making these... Uh, Bible studies. More than you think, really. All right, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because, you know, a lot of people think the Old Testament's not relevant anymore, but it absolutely is relevant. And I think those people that are obedient to the Lord, I think they're going to escape the brunt of what's coming upon the earth. Now, the Lord only promises you two things on this earth. Food and raiment, which is clothing. That's the only two things the Lord promises you on this earth. He doesn't promise you a car or a nice house or good health or, you know, a good-looking spouse or lots of money, contrary to Benny Hinn and... Uh, to the TBN crowd. So let's read Deuteronomy 28. Well, you know, let me let me look something up real quick. Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. You know what being content means? It doesn't mean being happy, but you know, it just means being satisfied. You know, um, I'd be happier with a, a house than I would with a tent. You know, but if, if I had a tent, you know, you're supposed to be content. So if you got food and clothing, be content. In other words, be happy. And God hates complainers. You better believe God hates complainers. Absolutely hates them. All right, let's read Deuteronomy 28. Here we go. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations, of the earth. Well, that used to be the United States, but that was a long time ago. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. 
Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. That's your children, people. And the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind. Kind is just an Old Testament, I mean, an Old English word means cow. And the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto thy himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Wasn't there a time when the world was afraid of Christians? I mean, let's face it, people. When, when, when England carried the King James Bible on their ships, they had an empire. They went and subdued whole nations of heathens, like India. India was a heathen. It still is a heathen nation. They have at least 100,000 gods. I mean, you know, CERN, you've heard of CERN, C-E-R-N, in uh, Switzerland. They even took a statue of Shiva, which is called the Destroyer, probably India's name for Satan. Uh, they put one of their statues in front of CERN. So, you know... When America and when England honored the Lord, they had an empire. And now they have forgotten the Lord and they're turning their churches into mosques. England is absolutely flooded with Muslims. I know a woman from England, and she's she went back to England after, I don't know, ten years. And she said she doesn't even recognize it anymore. They call London, London Stan. They even have a Muslim mayor. What does that tell you? You want to know why? Uh, well, let's keep reading and we'll know why. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven shall give the rain unto you, uh, I'm sorry, the heaven sh to give the rain unto thy land in its season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Do you know there was a time when the United States was the most prosperous, richest nation in the world. We used to lend to everybody. Now that we're no longer a, a nation of Christians, now we're the biggest debtor nation in the world. We owe China more. Well, you know, China was a third world nation. And then we shipped all our factories and technology to China. And we let them rule over us. China owes, uh, owns more debt in America than the entire country's worth. And trust me, one day they will come to collect the debt. Ah, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Yeah, we'll be, we would be, when we're... When we honor the Lord, we'd be the head. We'd be the leaders and not the tail. And, uh, and thou shalt be above 
only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But, oh boy, here's that but. Just remember, goats love but. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. Oh, here comes the but part. If thou wilt not hearken, and, you know, in other words, if you don't listen, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Uh, isn't, aren't our cities cursed? Oh, yeah. We've got uh, gangs. We've got the MS-13 gang. They're, I think they're from El Salvador. They're taking over sections of the city, and they're just extremely violent. Uh, look at Chicago. I mean, you got a mayor, nice kosher male mayor named Rahm Emanuel, whose father was a terrorist. Uh, they had uh, 762 murders in Chicago last year. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, that's an average of two murders a day. That's not just shootings. That's just people that died from the shootings. Chicago is the third largest city in the United States. You think New York and L.A. is any different? No. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. See, this is what happens when you don't obey, when you don't listen, when you, you know, do your own thing. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, and the increase, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed. Ooh. Until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. You see, the Lord made us to serve him, and if you won't serve him, he'll destroy you. Let's face it, people. I love dogs, for the most part. But if you bring a dog into your family, and the dog takes a dump in your room, won't go outside, uh, bites all your family members, you know, what are you going to do with the dog? You're going to keep it when it bites your kids and everything else and your spouse? No. You're going to get rid of it. Let's face it. You think God's any different? Verse 21. See, this is what happens when you turn away from the Lord. Okay? Verse 21, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee. What's pestilence? Disease. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he hath consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword. That's war. And with the sword and with blasting and with mildew. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heaven which is over thy head shall be brass. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. I'd like to see you grow crops in iron. You can't. Verse 24. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. Read about the Dust Bowl in America, people. The Dust Bowl. It didn't rain in the Midwest, the breadbasket of the United States, and 
the wind just picked up all the earth and turned it into dust clouds. People choked to death from all the dust. People went blind because all the sand got in their eyes. There was no water. All the crops died. You know, one of the reasons why that happened? Because when the Red Terror happened in Russia, communist Russia, and they were murdering all the Christians over there openly, they had crop failures over in Russia. They had no food. Their people were starving. What did the United States do? We fed those that murdered the Christians. So what did God do? The Dust Bowl. And then the Depression. That's what happened to America in the 20s and 30s. God was not pleased. But people will say, oh, it's just global warming. I know better. Look it up, the Dust Bowl. Look it up, people. Look up the Red Terror. Get the book Behind Communism by Frank Britton, B-R-I-T-T-O-N. Who killed Jesus? Who killed the apostles? Who kills the Christians? Nothing's changed. There's no new thing under the sun. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth and thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air. Oh yeah, your body's going to be food for the vultures. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth and no men shall fray them away. In other words, nobody's going to shoo away the birds from eating you. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with emeralds. Uh, emeralds. I think that's hemorrhoids. And with the scab and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. You know, itch, scabies, lice, bed bugs, right? The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Yeah, because the bankers are going to uh, foreclose on it. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou and shalt not gather the grapes thereof, because the, 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 the government will foreclose on your property for not paying your property taxes, because you don't have any money. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto other people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and, and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Isn't that what's happening today? The lands that were formerly Christian, Germany, England, the United States, we're being overrun and flooded with heathen third world aliens that hate us and Jesus Christ. This is coming to pass, people, and the clergy will not teach this. Oh, yeah, turn on TBN. Send God a blessing, and God will bless you. Here's our address to send your check. Yeah. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not shall eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed alway. So that 
thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and gather, and shalt gather but little in, for the locusts shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine, nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Ooh. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. In other words, it's not going to ripen, it's just going to fall dead to the ground. Thou shalt begat sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall, shall the locusts consume. The stranger, the heathens people, the stranger that is within thee shall get thee up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. And if you don't know what the tail is, people, take an animal's tail and lift it up and look underneath the tail and tell me what you see. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be unto thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Listen to this carefully. A Lord, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. What's happening in Germany, England, the United States? The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle, eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. I'm telling you people, I grew up in Miami in the 60s, and people spoke English. You go to Miami now, it's a cesspool of violence. And they speak a language that I do not understand. I was in Los Angeles, and I turned on the radio stations. There were more stations, radio stations, that played Spanish, spoken Spanish, than there were English. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle, 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 as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, 
which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thine kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he hath destroyed thee. That's what's happening, people. England, Germany, the United States. It's happening. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trusteth throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat. Do you know that there's opening up cannibal restaurants in the United States now? There's one in L.A., a cannibal restaurant. Where are they getting this stuff? The Los Angeles Department of Health gave them a go-ahead, from what I understand. I don't think it's a joke. I don't think it's a fake. Because, uh, uh, verse 55, So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness, wherein thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and toward her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for one of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. If, if, thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law which are written in this book that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name the Lord thy God then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues and of long count continuance and sword of sickness and of long continuance moreover he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. And every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of the law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number. That's what's happened to the white race people. We're the smallest race in the world right now. Whereas there was a time we were uh, the most numerous. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And part of that is because um, all the abortions, you know, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, which is nothing, and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest. But the Lord will give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt save. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. So when it's, when it's light, you're going to say, Oh, I wish it was dark. 
And when it's dark, you're going to say, oh, I wish it was morning. In other words, I, I wish this day was over with to start another day. Hopefully it will be better. But it's not. It's not going to be in, any better. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So what do they do with slaves that nobody's going to buy? They're not going to feed you. I mean, why are they going to spend money keeping you alive if they can't make a profit off you? They'll just kill you. Oh, this slave's no good. You know, nobody's going to buy the slave. So why am I feeding the slave? They just kill you. That's what happens, people, when... You get the blesses, blessings for obedience, and you get the curses for disobedience. This is coming to pass, America, England, and Germany, and France, and Italy, and all the other formerly nations that used to be majority-wise Christian. All right, well... Um, this is the end of part two. Stay tuned for part three. Oh, this is, you know, the, the uh, Great Tribulation is going to be because people want to worship Satan. Let's face it. That's what it's all about. People don't want the Lord. Christianity is, it, it's, there's a famine in the land. Amos said that to be a famine in the land, not of bread or water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. There's not many people that preach the word of the Lord anymore. So, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God. Slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' name, amen.